hit the crisis in 2015. You've got, uh, you're injured, late 2015, no? Uh, I had ankle surgery had the ankle before. Surgery. I, I wasn't yeah. injured no, or anything. No, no. I just you wasn't had, playing had the footy. Moment. I just wasn't enjoying it. I was thinking, and, you know, and what am I looking, doing? And as we do as human beings, we're judging ourselves on our peers, which is mm. our friendship groups. And you're yep. seeing people start to achieve in both football and you think you're stuck. Yeah. Um, and academically. And, and then also academically and stuff yeah. like that. So the law degree commences. Yeah. Do you go back to Townsville with any promises about football or do you just think packing football in, I'm going to go up there and see what happens or? Uh, I went back on track, but as in, I had no promises as to the team, but I, I did have a contract. The Black Hawks? Yeah. How did that come about? Uh, was that before you decided to do the law degree or was that happening regardless? Well, the year before I got offered a contract from the Black Hawks their first year but I was happy in Brisbane, so I stayed in Brisbane. And then at the end of that year, they offered me an, uh, another opportunity to go back. Okay. And I just sort of thought, I just started my degree. I wanted to finish it as quick as possible. And I thought the best way to do that would be to move back to town so I could stay with mum and dad for a bit while I was finishing it off. Financially a bit smarter. So mum and dad are still in town, so there's not a dice, yeah. not dice art. Yeah. So you can sort of manage the fact that you're studying, you've, your football, your work, maybe your income's not going to be as high. Yeah, I still but you work. you can save on the rent. Nearly, at the, at the start I didn't work full time, but after a while I ended up working full time. It's an incredible commitment you've made over over four, three years yeah. to play football at a really high level, mm. study full time, yep. and train full time. Yeah. So, and work 40 hours a week. Yeah, so I started. It's a massive, massive When I journey. first went back, I was just, I was working in a, um, construction shop called um, uh, Global Fasteners and I worked I there while I was playing there, yeah. Well, they started in Townsville and I started yeah. working for them when I was playing 20. So I went back and I worked there for maybe, oh, I can't remember how long. And then I got an opportunity to work in a criminal law firm in Townsville. And then, so once, I never thought I'd enjoy criminal law, but once I started doing it, I've, it's the only way I want to go. Yeah, oh, I wouldn't mind trying a bit of commercial or something at some stage, but I do enjoy the criminal law because it, it's fast paced. You're in court, you're meeting with clients. Um, I'd go to the prison, when I was in Townsville, I'd go to the prison every Friday, every afternoon. So you sort of just, it's, it was always busy. Heard stories about the prison up there. Oh, what stories have you heard? No, we'll get into, we'll get into that later. We'll get into to the now qualified lawyer and practicing lawyer. Yep. Sam Foster at the end. Um, what happened at the Blackhawks? You know, you spent a fair bit of time there um, yeah. before you played a couple of games of tweet. I don't know how it all worked out, which is obviously we're going to piece together here. Um, like I said, the Blackhawks in that run probably should have got a title over the line, yeah. in my opinion, humbly. Um, where did it sit for you? How was it? how? Just give us a bit of a journey through that couple of years. At, so once once I got to the Black Hawks, you're back at the Black Hawks. Yeah, I got back to the Black Hawks. You're feeling like mentally good. You, yeah. You've got your degree out uh, of the way. It was sort of a process after this sort of getting the degree. It was probably my last year at the um, Black Hawks that I sort of felt clearest because I'd yep. sort of got through the majority of my degree. I could see the light at the end of the tunnel, yep. and I sort of started enjoying my f football again for a long time. I didn't, it was just sort of something I'd do, but I, it, most boys have like a weird relationship with football that they hate it, but they can't, can't give it away. Can't give it away, and it was sort of like that for a while. It's what you've done since you were a young boy, since you were seven. Exactly, and a lot of your entire life is based around, I guess, your identity as, fo as a footballer, you know, and then sort of as you get older, you sort of, you don't, sort of think like that as much to anymore. You part yourself, or you yeah. start to start to feel confident enough in yourself to say, I'm Sam Foster, I'm, I'm the lawyer, than, and I'm more than yeah. just a footballer. Yeah, especially when you grow up in a small town too. Like, yeah, football's everything up there. Exactly. So, so you, you, you're, you're actually famous, genuinely. <laughs> no, no, like, as, no, when I say famous. I wouldn't say that. Say, okay, I would say let that, me, but let, like... Let's when clarify you, that, like... The difference between being a Townsville Blackhawks player and an East Tiger player has a massive difference oh, in yeah. your local community. Yeah. Though. Like, yeah. You don't go out uh, into Brisbane City and people go, oh my God, Sam, you play for the East Tigers. You know, yeah, you, when you're a Blackhawks player in Townsville and you go out to the Mad Cow, it's a bit of a different reception. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but but like things like the media, so like 
in Townsville, the media reports on the Blackhawks on the Blackhawks and the um, Townsville Heat. So like the the basketball yep. and the you know there's a lot more attention Minty's on the sort on of it. the the second level sport sports. You know the reserve grade yeah. sports. So there's a lot more attention on things like that. But um, you know the Blackhawks are very. I say they're very similar to to East, like extremely professional. You know, there's nothing that us boys go without, and we trained extremely hard. And I think probably, I think every year we just sort of dropped off at the end. We just sort of exhausted. Started well. Started well. We were just exhausted by the end of the year. And you, half the issue is, is being mentally fresh at the end of the year. Like, how many times do you see a team go through the entire year, no one can touch them, and then they just drop out at the end of the year, like sort of what Sunny Coast did last year. Do you ever think that has something to do with the fact, I mean, Townsville's probably the next biggest behind ourselves and Sunny Coast, as far as a team that gets a lot of support from their feeder club, they get a lot of players. I mean, yeah. Townsville over, say, the Pride, the Cutters, mm. get the majority yeah. of Cowboys yeah. guys, to be yeah. fair. Um, so I always feel like sometimes when you come to the big dance and you come to the, the knock them down, drag them out contest, mm. you got to sort of want to bleed for this a bit more. Yeah. Do you ever feel like that has something like Sunny Coast last year, Townsville for a lot of those years, when it, when it, when the going starts to get really tough, when it starts to become life or death for the game? Because it only takes one bad game to knock, knock you out. I mean, for example, Sunny hey, Coast... Are you sort of saying that some of the blokes that are coming back from the first grade systems don't... They don't bleed they for the jersey like the guys that, that are contracted there? Oh, I probably can't really speak for them because... I mean, uh, that's yeah, just a theory I, I'm tossing the, up. The blokes that came back when we were there, they always... Put in? Uh, yeah, they always put in. So, but... I know I understand the point you're making, but most, like most blokes when you get to this level, they're extremely competitive. So yeah. you can put they them in some win. random team that they've never um, played for, and and they're killing themselves trying to win. So yeah, I don't think it's ever been a problem here at the East Tigers. I think the guys we've had from Melbourne sort of certainly feel part of the whole EBF thing. They they actually yeah. feel a bit of a tie to the club. We try and make that emotional bond. Um, I just thought that like when I watched the Sunny Coast get beaten by Burley last year, for example, I just thought. Burley were riding a wave of emotion talent wise, probably weren't the better team, but mm. that, that made the wave of emotion, the support, the you know, the longevity in the jersey, the the pride for the jersey sort of was what mm. got them over that game. Anyway, just just a theory, just just asking your opinion. Um, Christian Wolf and the Wolf brothers have a pretty uh, have a reputation as, as hard coaches, hard trainers, professional setup. Um, he obviously got you back there, you, did a bit, bit with him over time. Um, what made you want to leave the um, Blackhawks? Just more so an opportun like opportunities, really. Like, I'd sort of finished my degree and I never really wanted to stay. Like, I, I went back to Townsville to finish that and then I was always planning on coming back here. So yeah. it, it was more so... Um, to say if football was really, really good in Townsville, I still would have left. Okay. But... That's because sort of made professional, it, you, as far as the profession goes, you wanted to get into the I city. wanted to be down here, yeah. 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 Uh, how does that process start to come into the East Tigers? Um, well, I'd actually, when I first went back to Townsville, I'd, that's when um, Sips had first started here, and I'd had a meeting with him. So um, 2014, 2015. end of 2014. Wow, so it and, goes back that far. Yeah, well, actually, when I f first um, saw him with North, one of the other teams was East. So I, I've kind of gone a long way around. If I just Together, signed with yeah. if I just signed with East in the beginning, I probably would have been here for, I don't know, if for it years. Never hopefully, worked out like that, you know, you just never know how, nah, that works yeah, out. how things work out. But um, so, and then midway through 2018, I tried to I'd finished my degree and I tried to get a release to come down here to play for East because I. I think you guys had had a few injuries in the halves. Yeah, that was the start of the finals run, but we did yeah. have all year. We basically had Melbourne halves, I believe. Yeah, I think. Anyway, uh, uh, basically, uh, I, that was my first year at East yeah. back being involved, and yeah. the two halves would have been Josh I, Ralph I think and Brayden Torpy for the hooker. Actually, oh, okay. I can't, I can't remember, but 
I tried to get the release. Butters had been injured actually yeah, for a long I think, time. I think yeah, that, sorry. I think that's what it was because I had back. been playing a fair bit of hooker, so I was. It was pretty frustrating because they wouldn't release me, but at the same time they weren't playing me, so it was pretty. It's pretty frustrating. And then you watch these go on and then, a tear to make the grand final. It must be exactly, hard and to I watch. thought I could have been a part of that. Yeah. So that really sort of made me quite bitter um, about the way sort of things ended up there. Obviously, with no hard feelings to the boys because they're they're all a really good bunch of blokes and still mates with all of them. But that that's just part of football. Is that you know it becomes a bit of a business. And when I was younger, I probably took things like that personally. But as well, that I still took personally because one, you won't give me the opportunity, but two, you won't release me. me. That's co- I sort of kind of found that plus a bit, a bit of vindic- loyalty there with and your longevity within a relationship with yeah, Christian. Yeah, yeah, I kind yeah. of found that a bit like vindictive, to, take, to be yeah. honest with you. I like you know, yeah, it, it was it was ex- when it first sort of went down, it was extremely sort of frustrating. It was amongst my last exams and stuff, yeah. but you know everything. Or everything happens for a reason, and it's all worked out. I'm here now, and um, I'm enjoying living in Brisbane. I'm enjoying being at ease. And so, when do you pack up the car and head? I mean, obviously, that solidified your decision to come for 2019, your first year with us yep. last year. Yeah. Uh, when do you pack the car up and, and head to? Um, I think like two days before preseason began. So I worked right up until the Friday. And you're working with a law- legal firm in yep. Townsville, right up. Until right up until the Friday, and then I left the Saturday. We started training on the Monday. I generally leave things last minute like that. So I think it's more no uh, an indication of how hard of a work you are. Because uh, as I got to know you last year, actually we were playing a game uh, at Reserve Grade over at um, at South at, at Acacia Ridge, and we went into the bar afterwards, and oh, yeah. the bartender is Sam Foster. Um, so. He, you know, moonlighting your day job with earning extra money still at South because and, and yeah. you do like the people there as well, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Turn good, the extra cash. Lots of nice like old that. fellas but, over. You know, for a twenty-six-year-old guy, bachelor, to spend his Saturday nights earning the extra money uh, on top of working full time, being a full time footballer, playing football, I think that's a pretty commendable sort of work ethic to have. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I, I just I sort of there's other things that I want in life, like um, you know, I'd like, I'd, well, the plan was this year is to use all the money we make from football and doing the nights in the leagues club to buy a house. Yep. Um, so, you know, and obviously... You can't give up on that yet? No, well, um, I don't know if this is a smart thing to do, but I'm thinking of using the, um, you know, we can get access to our super if we've lost more oh, than yeah. 20%. So I'm sort of thinking of maybe using that even though I haven't lost too much super as it is at the moment but I might be trying to figure out a little way a around way to it, do but it but you're a driven guy and obviously your next goal your next big personal goal is to buy your own property yeah is... buy, buy my own property and I'm also in the process of um, um, going through like the eligibility process to be able to sit in New York bar um, sort of fallen in love with the states and New York in particular so suits I want to yeah suits <laughs> Billions, <laughs> maybe a bit of power. Yeah. No. Um. So to to go over there and to try and uh, have a crack at being a lawyer over there. I when I was over there at the end of last year, I got a really cool experience. I just rocked up to their like local, or their man, sort of the equivalent of their magistrates yep. court, and sort of talked my way in and met a few people. And I actually got to sit at the bench with the judge. That's pretty cool. Yeah. They were, like just walking straight in off the street. Too. There's a lot of stories where he just ends up right place, right time, which we probably can't put to air tonight. But <laughs> that's a pretty incredible thing to think that you've walked in, yeah. public, you know, general public, not even a citizen. I didn't have any like business ID. cards, resume, nothing. I, obviously, just because of the questions that I was asking, they that's I incredible. guess assumed that I knew. So that was pretty cool. And then I got to go meet a um, federal court judge, um, one of the the ladies that I met that worked for Legal Aid there. She was a um, associate for a judge, and then I got to go meet that judge, and like it just made me more hungry yeah. for it. So that that's the plan, is to do that in a, a couple of years. Footy. Yeah, a couple of years. I want, I want to win a premiership with footy, and then well, don't we all be these tigers will be winning yeah. a premiership? Be easier said than done. So, right. and yeah. then after that, I'll probably yeah go have a crack at that. So, final football question. Yeah. 
we come back the same vibe next year and we finally get it done. We yeah. break the duck. 1991 yeah. to yeah. 2021. Yeah. Would that be it? For me. Premiership, do you think that would be, you know, I mean, obviously good squad and you've got the potential to go back there a couple, like, you know, because you're yeah. competitively, like you say, footy, yeah. you have this relationship with it where you say you're 27, 28 at the time. Not that old yet. Not, no, I mean, absolutely. And because once you give up though, yeah, that's it. You, like, can't, go you can't go back. So, but with, it is a young squad. Yeah. It would, I guess it would be a hard decision to make. You win the premiership knowing that your squad has probably still got a lot of growth in yeah. it too. Yeah, exactly. With some of those young fellows we got coming through, like Hunty and Heath, and um, even know, the Zach Tybees and stuff Tybees like that. and all those boys. Like um, and then even Alan like Dawn's been killing Dorney. it. So Percy's only twenty. I think Percy's my age. He's twenty six. So part of the school, you know, part of the senior. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I could sit here and say, yeah, that would be, but probably wouldn't. Like, I yeah. remember saying to myself that, oh, if I hadn't made it by the time I was 21, that, um, that'd that's be the, it. That's it. I'll, I'll go focus on, you know, I'm a family life, and two kids by 25. That's definitely not happening anytime soon. Yeah. But um, I, I don't know. I don't know. If I'm enjoying my football, I'll keep playing because I, I guess the biggest thing for me is not, I don't want to regret anything. Yeah. So I'd rather have a crack at something and fall flat on my face then to go, shit, I should have played one more year. And let's be yeah. real, football's coming to the end of the window and the career's yeah, and you can only play football. You can only door. play football for so long. And, yeah. you know, I've sort of bashed my body up fairly good, so I might not get as many years as, say, someone else has. So you just got to make the most of it while you can. And so if that's another couple more years, then that's so it. be it. But Okay, um, before we wrap up, you were in New York last year, but... Uh, the reason Sam was in New York last year was to run the New York Marathon along with a family holiday, but... Uh, no one else in the family ran it. No, 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 <laughs> but like the whole family was there with yep. him um, and spent a bit of time over the holidays there. Yeah. But we've already detailed his busy football, his busy life, busy work schedule. And on top of that, he trains to run a 42-kilometre marathon in coldest conditions yeah it was pretty cool it wasn't freezing or anything, I mean but... what's the motivation to do that is that just a thing like you see it it's a bucket list yeah. the Sam Foster way I need to do that goal set ticket done yeah well it's actually the second one I've done I did one a couple of years earlier my mate and I went to New York and we planted around going watching um, George St. Pierre fight at Madison Square Garden and then we're like what else can we do in New York at this time and it came up with a marathon yeah. so we did the marathon and that was the next day and I stuffed up the time of the card I thought the main card started at 7.30 but the entire prelim started at 7.30 so we left there at 2.30 in the morning had to be up at 4 to catch the bus to start the marathon so this time was a lot better like I got a good night's sleep yeah right so um, but it's, so it's it, started, it started with like a bucket list thing and then once you do it like anyone that likes a little bit of running, I highly recommend it because it's an amazing feeling when you finish it. And especially in a place like that, like they line the streets, the entire mm. 42 Ks and it's like 10, 20, 30 the people in the deep. World. There's bands playing. And as you run through the different boroughs, you see the different sort of like pockets of different cultures. Yeah. And it's just, it doesn't even feel like you're sort of running. It's just... It's oh, interesting. There's yeah, visual stimulation as you go. Yeah, I'm sort of obsessed. Well, I'll keep doing them. Like, I wouldn't mind trying in Iron Man. That's probably the next one I want to try. But that's that might have to wait until after football because there's that short sure of that. future ambition. What's that, sorry? I mean, you're just obviously not a guy short of future ambition. We've got building towards a house. Yeah. New York bar to potentially, you Practice know, work in the there. States yep. when we finish football. Yeah. And an Iron Man, you know, they're they're not small goals. They're not like I want to run a ten k bridge to Brisbane. That, 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 that's very commendable. Um, New York Marathon, we do it again, third time lucky. Yeah, well, I went in the ballot this year, but I didn't get drawn. So, we'll, so we'll, see. we'll see. Maybe another couple of years time, but we yeah. aimed to go for about thirty minutes. We've probably gone for an hour now, so Apologize probably about good time. No, off. I hope yeah, I, we hope the fans have enjoyed it. Um, I want to finish with something that I've thought of called the set of six. It's basically a fancy way of playing word association. I'm going to spit a word at you and I want you to say the first thing that comes back yep. from your mind. Craig Hodges. 
Coach. Tony Guilfoyle. Um, tough. New York Marathon. Fun. North Queensland Cowboys. Uh, home. Hmm. Hero. Uh, I've, that's a bit of a tough one. Like, I've got a few, you know, there's sort of people you see. Uh, we'll let you. We'll let you. sort of people you see, like, I might be in court and then I might see this barrister, you know, do a plea or something and you just go, oh, wow, they're, they're absolutely amazing. Like, I'd love to be, okay. you know, as good as them. And But obviously football probably... You know, people like, um, like Cooper Cronk and Jonathan Thurston, um, Cameron Smith, all those sort all of those blokes, guys. Andrew Johns. And then obviously, it's a bit cliche, everyone sort of says it, but my parents, you know, they sort yeah. of came to Australia. They had, you know, nothing really. Like, and then they had me when they were really young and they've done so everything well. Everything for you. Oh, just yeah. everything for me. And then like in their own Not lives, their own they've... World built their own world and became, you know, quite successful and that. So it's, you know, they definitely are. I should have finished on that one, but the last one, best game. Best game is in- Your I've best game. Ever played. Um, I think the best game I've ever played was when I first moved to Townsville. I got asked to play in the 18s, Mal Meninga side when I was playing in the Cyril Connells. So yep. I was playing up a couple of years and Adrenaline got you through. And I just, whatever I touched, Turned like to it gold. just went to gold. And like I was doing banana kicks and, and it's coming off. It's just all coming off. Like it didn't matter what I did, it just all worked. I think, oh, I can't remember any other ones, but that I just remember that Come day thinking. Long, that's it. Yeah. Oh my God, went home, feeling yourself. Yeah, it was like, and then I think I got signed the, the, next, next, the next week there or something. Go. So I think that was probably it's probably not a good thing to say because that was 10 years ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, the best is always yet to come. Thank you for giving us your time tonight. Uh, thanks for letting everyone get a bit more knowledge about who you are, what you're about. I think um, the most impressive part of your story is beyond being a footballer, you're so much more and, and mostly, apart from a good human, you're a driven human being. You know, you've got, you haven't let football become your, your sole desire. I think you should be proud of that. So I um, appreciate that. We hope you guys enjoyed uh, at the first of catching up with our players on Tiger Talk, a bit different for this year, obviously, with what's going on. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a comment. Send us some questions of your own in the comments. Let us know what you want to see next time. Um, Sammy's been great to be the first, first guy off the rank. Stay safe, stay at home, look after each other. We'll see you next time.